Proverbs chapter 7, you want to flip over to the next chapter. We'll see our last reference here for the, for the strange woman, for the whorish woman. We'll continue on to our next flatterer. <clears throat> Proverbs 7, verse number 4. The Bible says, Say unto wisdom, Thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman, that they may keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger which flattereth with her words. Now look, these are three different references in the book of Proverbs in chapter 2, chapter 6, and chapter 7 that refer to this strange woman that uses flattery. Okay, this is referenced over and over again. God's trying to let you know, okay, look, really, <laughs> be careful of these women that are just continually giving you compliments. And especially men that are married, look, it's so common for men to blow things off and just be like, oh yeah, well, she just, she's just being real nice. Right? And the wife's usually saying, like, I don't want you anywhere near that person. And for good reason. Right? Because usually the wife are, you know, is able to see things a little bit more clearly. Because when you start to receive flattery, often you, you like to receive it, but it could, it could, in a way, brings your guard down a little bit. Because you're thinking, wow, you know, like, I am really great. And this person is recognizing how great I am. Right? And that's what we'd like to think. And that's why it works. But that's also why we're being warned about it so many times. Is because, you know, and I'm, I'm not saying if someone gives you a compliment, just be like, get away from me, whore. <laughs> use discretion, use discernment. That's what the wisdom's all about, right? When, uh, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> when you start to see the pattern, and usually it'll be someone that you come into contact a little bit more frequently. Watch out for that. If you're married, you don't want to destroy that relationship at all. And like I said, adultery is, 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 in my opinion, it's like, if not the worst sin, one of the absolute most worst sins that you could possibly commit. Because you're not only affecting yourself, you are severely impacting your spouse. I mean, you are hurting and damaging your spouse and, and breaking that trust. It, it, it's, it's such a horrible sin. And uh, that's why God gave the death penalty for it. And this is, you know, people might be like, the death penalty, penalty, you know, it's happening all the time and people getting divorced left and right because people commit adultery. No, under God's law, people will be put to death. And that's a righteous judgment for that sin. It really is. It's a righteous judgment and that's something that, that today people just kind of blow off. The more things seem to happen, the more prevalent they are, the, the less people really think it's that bad of a sin. A great example of that is lying. Right? The Bible says in Revelation chapter 21, verse number 8, And all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. But today when people talk about lying, it's like, well, everybody lies. Look, I've lied before. You've lied before. So because we've done it, then everyone just seems to downplay the severity of that sin. But even in the Ten Commandments, the Bible taught us, hey, don't bear false witness. Right? If God places a punishment of hell... On telling a lie, that's a pretty serious sin. And we need to treat it as such. And just because things become prevalent doesn't mean that we just downplay how serious it is. And adultery is one of those things, unfortunately, in our culture that seems to be becoming more and more accepted. But we as Christians ought to live our life different and separate and say, you know what, I don't care. This world's going to hell in a handbasket, but I am going to use the law of the Lord as my light and as my lamp to guide me through this dark world. And to keep me from all of these sins. So we need to have the proper attitude about this and, and never even let yourself get close to committing adultery. So we're in Proverbs 7. Jump down to verse 21. The Bible says, With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. This is the tool she says she forced him just with the flattering of her lips. I mean, you think of forcing someone, you don't think of being nice to them. And flattering them. But this is the tool that she uses to force people. She caused him to yield with the flattering of her lips. She forced him. He goeth after her straightway as an ox goeth to the slaughter as a fool to the correction of the stocks till a dart strike through his liver as a bird hasted to the snare and knoweth not that it is for his life. So the guys that follow after this woman that flatters, he's saying like a big stupid animal, go, okay. And following after just real dumb, going to the correction of the stocks, not even realizing that there is a, there's death at the end of that. 